I'm Graham, and this is The Angling Adventure. Oh, fish! Holy... Name out of those weeds and smack. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, wow. There we go, guys. Beauty, man. This is why we keep this thing is massive. Look at this fish! Well, I think we're limited out, guys. But we're just trying to get the rods off, and we still can't keep them off. But we got a bunch of cohos there, biggest ones I've seen ever. And another one just freaking line up. Crazy, look at that. They all look wrong. Water bag. Absolute slaughter bag. Hi guys, welcome back. So today, uh, we are gonna do some pressure canning. So there was a really good coho bite there the other day. Um, we got a lot of fish. We uh, threw some on the grill the other day, shared some with my family, but we still have a lot of fish here. And I hate to freeze this stuff because it's, it's just not quite the same when you take it out of the freezer. I find it gets kind of soft. So um, one of my favorite things to do with this is can it and I've recently started doing this just uh, just recently here uh, I've been watching a lot of instructional videos on how to do so and I'm gonna share with you guys today um, just a basic way of how I like to do it it's pretty simple straightforward so come on and let's get canning So we're gonna tar start by taking the skin off these. I've already deboned all these flays. You don't actually need to debone them if you're canning them. Um, the bones just disintegrate in there and we're gonna put a little bit of vinegar in there. So you don't have to worry about that, but I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with these. So I did take the bones out of them. Um, so anyways, you're gonna take the skin off, um, cut these up into little chunks and then we're gonna put them in the can. So we're gonna fill up all the jars like this and then we're on to the next step. Just want to take a second to admire the size of these flays. Like, those are some huge fish. I have never seen a year like this for salmon on Superior in my whole entire life. It has been phenomenal. Um, some mature cohos in here like this, all like ranging in six to, six to seven pounds, is just phenomenal. Look at the size of that. Look at the size. Of Crazy. All right, guys, now that we have our salmon packed tightly into the jars with an inch of headspace, what we're going to do, we have some kosher salt and we have some white vinegar. Very simple. You're just going to take teaspoon of vinegar, put that in there, and a teaspoon, well, I don't do quite a full teaspoon of salt, just a, maybe about a half teaspoon, three quarters, um, you could vary that as you'd like though, so we're going to do that to all these, then on to the next step. So I've just dipped this rag in some white vinegar, paper towel, should I say, and I'm gonna clean off all the tops of these. Very good, so we get a good seal, make sure there's no dirt there. Make sure everything is nice and clean when you're doing this. And I didn't mention too, before you start doing this, you wanna make sure all your jars are washed out and very clean, sanitized, and that'll help your process go a lot smoother. And you'll have less failed seals and that's what we want all right now we're gonna put the lids on these jars and you don't need to have them super tight on there just nice and snug 
and these are ready for the canner. Now for the pressure canner, I've been using this uh, T-Fall pressure canner I purchased off Amazon. Um, you get these for, they're not cheap, but they're not super expensive, so. And what we did with that is we put, oh, fog in all up here. Got a couple inches of water in the bottom there, and we're gonna get these in. All right, so our canner is full, both levels. Simply lock your lid on, and you're going to set this to a setting of three. Um, there's a website online you can look um, for certain times and elevations of certain meat, um, what to set your pressure counter at. There's actually a website. Um, this also comes with a manual, and there's a lot of great information in there. For if you're just getting started so you can look up all that stuff but for what we're doing today um, the setting is three for pressure and we are gonna let that go for 90 minutes so we're gonna wait till that comes up to pressure and then hit the timer for 90 minutes and that should be about it so stay tuned and we'll show you what the finished product looks like can't wait Alright guys, so it has been one and a half hours. I'm just going to cut the heat here. I'm just going to let the steam bleed off that. Let it cool down a bit. Let's see what's in there. Alright, we've let this cool down. Depressurize. Let's see what we got here. Get our handy dandy jar grabbers. You can see there, these are still pretty hot, bubbling a bit, but. We're just going to let these sit out at room temperature um, for the night. And what you're going to look for is, you'll hear these eventually, they'll start to pop one by one. I think this one has popped already and you can see by actually pushing on top. If it clicks, it hasn't popped yet. If you have this, good to go so we're gonna take the rest of them out and it's good to let them sit anyways and let them all pop and yeah that's about it oh, did you hear that that's a pop so we're gonna make sure all these pop they will overnight that's about it thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you on the next one